Welcome back. It's now time to switch gears. We're expecting that today the Labour Congress, Nigeria Labour Congress, will continue their protest. But hey, uh, just between yesterday's protest and midnight, uh, they made, they gave it the, there was a release, a statement saying, uh, having been successful on the first day, they want to give the government a bit of chance, and they also give out an ultimatum and all of that. There were details in that particular statement. So some people are wondering what really happened in between, uh, or between yesterday and today, which is why we're going to have this conversation. The hunger, has it gone? Or was there a proposal that is going to get better? Or did government meet any of their demands? Because they constantly say the demands have not been met, and the government is saying 90% have been met. So we need to make sense of what is going on between labor and government as far as this whole protest is concerned. That's why we're being joined on the program by the head international relations uh, Nigeria Labour Congress, Comrade Uche Naikwe, joins us from our Abuja studio. Uh, welcome so, uh, to the program, Mr. Naikwe. Morning, thank you. So help us understand what happened uh, in detail, if possible, between yesterday and today. Uh, we saw this statement, but Nigerians are curious to find out maybe a little bit more uh, why some people say Labour had to back out, which is sometimes why some people you know, have issues with labor. Well, uh, you know, usually, as I said, I keep saying, uh, usually very interesting managing what people are saying. Uh, bearing in mind that many people say, come from their own perspective. But for us, the key thing is that we knew we have gotten to a point in this country where the hashtag let the people breathe had become real. And that we felt that government seems adamant or seems not to totally appreciate the level of pains and the level of pressure the ordinary Nigerian is bearing. And we felt that we needed to call their attention, draw their attention to the reality of this level of pains that is going on. We've made an attempt to communicate and use dialogue to see that the government is paying more serious attention to these challenges. But as usual, those letters were not receiving any serious attention. And it's so painful that government after government must wait until there is such a pressure before taking serious or paying serious attention to challenges. Now, it was until the death of the protest was getting close. That serious discussions started. And naturally, one would have expected that after writing several letters and communication to government, that the engagements would have started. And those engagements will be allowing people to bring up suggestions on the ways to deal with some of the challenges that is facing us. That wouldn't happen until the system begin to see that there will be a protest, rally, or strike. On our own part, we refuse to be deterred like I said, we are focused on what we want to achieve. I said earlier in this program that the NLC is not interested in strike, which will disrupt the system or protest. But we are interested that this system must address the challenges of the Nigerian people by doing all that it should do to stabilize or stop the galloping inflation, make sure that food 
gets to a rate that is affordable to the ordinary Nigerian. We are in no doubt that that disrupting the running of the economy will not be the ultimate way to go. But when we are pushed to do that as the only way to call the attention of the system to listen, we will do that. And that is what we try to do. And that what guides how long and how we deal with our automation. So having analyzed that there seem to be more commitment in engagement and discussion from the side of government, and they haven't appealed that they will need some, using our own hashtag now, that we should give them some breathing space to show that they, can, they are out to deal with issues at stake. We met after the protests of yesterday, our National Executive Council, and reviewed what have happened, and now felt it's okay. Of course, people have doubts. And yes, they have reasons to doubt that the government is sincere, taking into cognizance what have, what have happened in the past. Those doubts were there. But we said, okay, this protest is a warning. It's not even the major uh, uh, program we have. So we said, okay, having sent the warning and they having sought for time, we agreed. We give you the time. But if by 13th of March, we've not seen any significant change or difference, we will now have no recourse. And that will also give opportunity to those who feel that the NLC enjoy having strike of protest to know that we are not and that we are being pushed to go the extra mile. If I could quickly follow up with that, uh, you, you have said that um, Nigerians have, have good reason to doubt because of the past trajectory of labor with negotiations. Uh, in relation to that, if we recall the meeting uh, that the leadership of the main uh, organs had with the federal government about 48 hours ago, it was an atmosphere of uh, warmth and camaraderie. While it is only natural that... Uh, a degree of civility is expected on the path of uh, both leaderships. Uh, it's instructive to also tie it to this sudden, what Nigerians would call sudden, uh, short-lived protest by NLC. What would you say, how would you address Nigerians who, as a result of this, have, you know, just um, given up on the representation of the NLC and the TUC uh, to further their interests amid this continuing hardship? Well, you know, these things are interesting. You, you say the warmth and camaraderie. Where did you see the warmth and camaraderie? You are talking at the point people have come out of negotiation. In the negotiation room, I can assure you there was no warmth. Uh, it is not correct and it's not good for me to start letting you know the level of anger that went in during the negotiations. I could remember uh, some of your colleagues began to have a different attitude, those who were privileged. Uh, in one of the meetings, we thought that we didn't need to excuse the press. In one of the struggles and debates over fuel issues. When they, they participated in that meeting, I could remember 
Those meetings lasted to about 2 a.m. Some of your colleagues who participated in that meeting, the attitude became different because they realized that the face you see after the negotiation is different from what happens at the negotiating table. As a matter of fact, the level of anger, and you see, it is not coming to show the people that were angry during the negotiation. It's about putting the facts on the table. And when I talk about doubt, the people who are raising the doubt is the NLC leadership on their own. You know, and you have, in the last program I attended, played the voice properly. And you can see the balance of people who feel that NLC is doing too much strike. So, for us, we and I keep saying we understand that in a situation of frustration, that the level Nigerians have gotten, not to trust anybody is expected. But on our own part, having elected to put ourselves forward, to do this job, we appreciate fully the hazard of the mistrust and the challenges that will come. But also we remain focused because we know uh, uh, comrade, because you are basically a worker, mm. we know clearly that what is at stake here is the life of families. Right. Because when people don't have food, or can't afford their uh, hospital bills. It's life of people that is at stake. Okay. Um, and we know that that's not now. Stop, something anybody will be joking about. Uh, Comrade Ekwe, if I could just come in quickly. Quite a number of points raised. Um, we had a conversation with one of the conveners of a protest. I think this was in Edo State. I think a civil society organization, different from the NLC. And we asked um, what you know, their thought is about what NLC is doing, if they think it uh, essentially covers what their own agitations are. But then the position, uh, I'll just paraphrase, is that, well, the NLC really is doing this for workers, Nigeria Labour Congress, and that's why they had to also uh, carry out their own protests. And I'm sure you've seen other protests across the country, even before the NLC uh, it did its own protest. So uh, the, the question then arose that how overreaching will be Labour's protests really when Workers is just a little chunk of the Nigerian population. There are other people that are in the SME sector, even the unemployed and the rest. So that question has come up yet again, and I'm sure you've had to speak to that. But on the other hand, is what the minister said yesterday, that 90% of your demands have been sorted out. I know that we reeled out those, uh, the, you know, the items on that agreement last time we had you on the show and majority of them, according to you, had not even been resolved. Only a few had been done. In fact, the ones that were done were done late, if you recall that interview. So is that to say that there's been an update and 90% has been sorted, or we're missing something here? Well, let, let me start from the first question. Fortunately, you have those agreements, and we have discussed it. Looking through those agreements, you can't, in all honesty, say that Labour and NLC have only dealt with the workers' demand. You have it. It's so broad, it covers the SMEs, it covers what will, do, what will affect the households. And this protest, you can see, was never, and it's not, about worker specific. It is about Nigerian specific. We, the worker themselves, found themselves inside of it as Nigerians too. We have maintained that this protest is totally about drawing attention to the level of hardship that have degenerated. In fact, when we are holding our meeting, our own internal meeting, and having a debate and update on cost of living. 
And I was having a chat with a banker on something. And the banker was saying, look, comrade, I said something about hardship and you seem to send an emoji that is like you are smiling. And this matter is not a smiling matter because I cannot afford to buy Indomie for my children. And this is a banker talking about that. And this, so for us, that's the focus of this protest. That things have gotten to the point that families can hardly eat food. And that's the major plank of this. And we've refused cautiously to be drawn into the debate of what has been implemented out of the 16 point agreement. Because we know that is what we are going to engage completely in the next between now and 13th of March. But not seeming not to respond at all to the claim of the minister. 90%. And I, I had the minister talk about the 13th point in that program, which is social dialogue. You know what got us to this point? Is that that social dialogue had not been respected. It only came back only when we have issued a threat. The reaction of the government most times only comes only when there is threat. And that's why we hope. That's why I say that even in our own discussion, people were of the view, do we have any basis to trust that they will go into dialogue, which is the 13th in that right. program, and we say we give the benefit of doubt based on their appeal that this could be done. But I wonder what could be 90% when one of the big challenges of the present economic situation is the cost of movement. That is the transportation. And the CNG and running out of buses is one thing that can make a whole world of this. If I, uh, uh, Mr. Ekwe, if, if, I, if, I may, if I may button, Mr. Ekwe, uh, just uh, because you're landing on that thought, and I needed to add this because of time, we're racing against time. So what is urgent for the labor union? What is urgent? Is it increment in salary? How much is labor looking at? Is it rolling out of CNG buses? What exactly is urgent that maybe was whispered between yesterday and today that this, maybe the federal government had mentioned that the Labour announced, said, okay, if that is it, we'll call off this protest and see how you react between now and 13. Of what, basically, out of what is very urgent is bringing down the cost of food. Government have said that they are going to go into the strategic grain reserve move out food, which we, they believe will drop down the price of uh, essential commodities like rice and other food items, maize, millet. It is urgent that those strategic reserves be released to push down the price of food. Very, very urgent. On the issue of increment of salary, what needs to be done is to speed up the negotiation. Yes, the committee has been set up, but it's not about setting up the committee to negotiate minimum wage. It is at that level that every discussion about the, what else is put in, but that is concluded with speed. Two, that the implementation of the salary award the, 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 the wage award, not salary award, the wage award should be scaled down to state and local government, which has not happened. And pressure put on the private sector to implement. Those implementation 
has not happened at the state level, at the local government level. These are urgent. Yes, the rolling out of buses and the CNG is urgent because pushing down the cost of movement, transportation, is critical to pushing down the cost. All the discussion and everything the CBN is talking about, we need to see practically that the, the, the rush, the, the total collapse that we are witnessing in the part of Naira is redressed as quickly as possible because it is not acceptable that Naira should be the weakest currency in the entire West African sub-region. These are urgent and things need to be done to deal with them. So, so Ms. Ekwe, do you see this happening between now and the 13th? Well, there are things that can happen. It, it doesn't take uh, 100 days to make sure that releases from the strategic grain reserve gets out to the street. It doesn't need 100 days for us to start seeing that the, our currency is gaining strength. Not just against the dollar, but even against the currencies within our surrounding. This could be done within the time. Well, Mr. Ikwe, while uh, 40,000 uh, tons of grains have been described, has been described as grossly inadequate to meet the hunger needs of the nation and to reduce the price of uh, uh, cost of uh, commodities, what may be of bigger concern to Nigerians and you know, will come as a relief would be the release of um, uh, the implementation of the CNG program by the federal government. From, your, from the meeting that leadership of labor has had with the federal government uh, in the last 48 hours, what can you tell Nigerians about the status of the implementation of that program? Well, the, the government on this part have claimed that they had a bit of hitches in the releasing of the buses and the implementation of the CNG. If you, if you, if you notice, I've continuously hammered, even in the last discussion, the conversation we held here, I, I, I was I, retreating the position of the NLC being upbeat that the, whatever it needs to be done in getting the CNG rolled out, the buses, and even the conversion, we have been upbeat on it. And we took it to the negotiation, and the government have appealed, and now have started giving what looks like a strong commitment to implementing it. We will be falling short if they say that the ability to do that is that we suspend action to enable the environment to do it. We will be falling short if we now got ourselves to be accused that you refuse to allow the enabling environment to get this done. And that's what the window you don't have provided now. Well, uh, just to take a few comments that we're getting on this one, and um, uh, this is from some of our viewers. I just want to bring them in, uh, Comrade. Uh, this says, uh, Comrade Mohamed Sani from uh, Federal University of Wukari, Taraba State. And the question is essentially, who do we trust now? NLC, that is our last option, of a government that constantly denies its promises. So that's from uh, a Comrade colleague, I must say, Comrade Abubakar of Federal University of Wukari, Taraba State. And the second one, if you could just take them quickly, uh, is from Phillips. says, whatever government has said was not said yesterday. Call off a planned two-day strike after one day call to question the intention of NLC in the first place. So I think he's saying that the calling off of the protest, rather, uh, causes him to question the intention. And he says, I hope everyone is not playing politics with the citizens' predicament. So... Uh, those are some of the comments coming in, and I think they reflect uh, what we've also talked about, some of the skepticism 
uh, that the people have shared. So you might want to respond to that. We have just less than uh, 30 seconds to wind down. But also just to say, are you saying the minister what? was not correct to have said 90% has been achieved? Even you have said that. I have not said even that. you have I'm said that 90% have not been achieved. Because when you said, when we now are dis were discussing the CNG and the role it could play, that alone have said that 90% have not been achieved. And again, when I have talked about that the local governments and states have not implemented the wage award, it also points to that 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 has not happened. On the doubt, you, you know, I have continually said that the point and the level of pressure in the society, it will not be, it will be out of place not to expect that the people will find it difficult to have trust. I, I know that. You, but you, having you said made that, reference to that. Comment. I also, so having if you said, said that, pardon me, if you said that, but said that, is not the case. Pardon me, uh, we're about to wind down, but just to put this on record, if you say it's not 90%, is it 50%? Is it 40%? What is it on your An side? Average. My, uh, our average. Our average is about 50%. And also, mm. let me put it, because that question has come up. You see, people doubted that we would, wouldn't even do a protest at all. And that the protest will not be successful. Now, so, having been successful, and now people are doubting why one day, like I said, we expect all that, but we are focused. All right. The percentage for us is not anything beyond 50%. All right. And all this we are going to deal with in the, between now and 13th March. All right. Conrad, we want to thank you for coming on the program. We'll keep tab on what's going on between the federal government and of course, the organized labor, Kormaduchi Naikwe, the head, international relations, but, Nigeria, but, Nigerian Labor Congress. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Yeah, on a closing note, I would have also have loved to hear part of that rap from Bukola. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay tuned. To the, towards the end of the show, she's going to do it again. I, I like the <laughs> light ammo. Thank you so much. You can uh, play back, comrade. But thank you so much. <laughs> comrade, thank you so much for coming on the program. Well, guys, uh, exactly what it is. So he said 50%. The government has said two versions. Uh, the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, uh, for Information said 80%. Uh, Minister of Labor said 90%. So government should agree on the percentage, at least. Let's know what to hold and who to hold for what. But that conversation continues. We'll now take a break. When we come back, we'll switch gears to other issues, which has to do with the Orange report. What exactly is it all about? And the details will bring you on the show. Join us again.